Hi, my name is Nicole. I'm here at the Pearl Review, my new YouTube channel. I'm doing a series on classics and personal favorites for people who are considering reading these books uh, and just going over why I think they're special. So today I'd like to talk about Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast. Uh, this was published in 1964, a few years after Hemingway had died himself, um, and it is him reminiscing about his youth. I read this in the spring last year, and I think it's a great time to read it because it is a lot about youth and there is some beautiful descriptions of Paris in the spring. Uh, this book is about Ernest Hemingway being in his 20s in Paris with his first wife, Hadley, and their baby. And it's set in the 20s, so it's during the lost generation period where there's all of these great figures and bohemians that are living in Paris, and we get to meet a lot of them in this book. It's not a traditional novel, it is an autobiographical series of vignettes, um, and they're great sketches of these different people and of Hemingway himself. Um, if you're a person who wishes they could have been a fly on the wall, um, you know, during certain conversations, who is curious about writers, themselves, you know, outside of the works that they created, this is a fantastic book to read. I actually had trouble with Ernest Hemingway in the past. Um, I had tried to read The Old Man in the Sea maybe three times when I was a lot younger, um, and, and that never worked out. And that's pretty pathetic because it's a short book. And a few years ago, I tried reading um, a farewell to arms and also I maybe got three quarters of the way in but I think that this book hits a sweet spot uh, my opinion is that uh, Hemingway has this kind of spare pared down style um, but this book is very sensual uh, he talks about these simple pleasures and there is this like great um, success where he is writing in that style and talking about things that give him great joy. Um, the copy that I do have, um, it's worth mentioning, Boop. There, there's a later edition that his grandson helped in publishing that is much bigger and from the research I've done a lot of people prefer the original. I think this is the Scribner's classic I don't think Scribner is around anymore. Anyway, so this book is so much fun. Um, his teacher basically is Gertrude Stein. He's, he, he's not like Papa Hemingway yet. He, he's on his way to becoming that. Um, you get a feel of, you know, Hemingway's process and his writing. Like there's um, vignettes of him, you know, being in a cafe writing. Uh, so he talks with Gertrude Stein. Um, he has an argument with Ford Maddox Ford. Uh, he becomes friends with F. Scott Fitzgerald right after or while he's publishing The Great Gatsby. That is so cool. Um, and sadly, only very brief um, moments with James Joyce and brief moments with Sylvia Beach, who was the owner of Shakespeare and Company, a great famous bookstore that was open in that time. and many um, famous writers were friends and, and were part of this um, library slash store that she had. So this book is so enjoyable. It is, um, it, it, it's like a manifesto to <laughs> the simple pleasures of life. Um, the final sentence of the, the book, which will not give anything away, I promise, is this. Um, but this is how Paris was in the early days when we were very poor and very happy. And that totally is what this book is about. You know, a lot of the conversations um, happen over great food and drink. And when there isn't great food or drink, Hemingway is a starving artist who is really looking forward to his next meal. And he's like wistfully walking through, you know, the streets of Paris. It's so mellow, it's so enjoyable of a book, but my favorite parts of this book are really his interactions 
with um, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda uh, Fitzgerald's wife. Um, Hemingway and Fitzgerald, about two thirds of the way into the book, go on a long excursion and it's ridiculous. It's so fun and funny. Um, and also this book um, goes to the Alps, um, to a village of shrooms, I believe. Uh, and so there's some beautiful descriptions of Hemingway snowshoeing up mountains and, and meeting villagers and, and skiing and avoiding avalanches. This book has a lot of stuff and it's only 200 pages. Um, so if any of this appeals to you, I would say check it out. It's a, it's a really enjoyable book and it's probably a great entryway into reading Hemingway and getting like a, a feel for his style. So I love this book. Um, if you like this book and um, have any comments, please feel free to comment below or send me a message. And thanks so much for listening.